Hi guys, I'm Chelsea. I'm a digital nomad originally from the United States and I have been traveling fully nomadic for about a year now. And right now I am going to tell you exactly how I did it, how I started and how much money I have actually spent in a year of traveling through Latin America. So when I left the United States, it was after about a year and a half of staying with my family during COVID and saving up as much money as I could. I was making money from my YouTube channel, which is very little when I left. That was my only consistent income. But I did have a bit of a savings and I told myself that if I didn't find a source of income that was, you know, more than I was spending, by the time I hit a certain amount of money in my savings account, I would have to get, you know, a boring online job. So in the past year, I have gone to the Dominican Republic, Mexico, Colombia, Guatemala, Peru, and Ecuador. So let's start with food costs. In Latin America, it is so easy to eat for so cheap. In a lot of countries, countries, you can even eat out for almost every meal and still spend like under $10 a day. In some of the smaller towns I've been to, like uh, San Pedro in Guatemala, or Ica or Nazca in Peru, it is a little hard to find big um, grocery stores where you can get everything you need in one go. And so definitely at the beginning of my time, I was not eating nutritiously. I was just seeing how little I could possibly spend. The answer is very, very little, but I was also like a little bit starving. So I would not recommend that. If you eat the local foods like fruits, vegetables, rice is really good. You can maintain a very, very low budget. Now in places like Cali, Colombia, you can eat out and get meals of the day for like 12,000 pesos. That's going to be like a salad, a soup, rice, um, a drink, some sort of protein. And you can always ask for vegetarian options and they'll just like give you eggs instead of chicken. All right, so now let's talk about flights, which of course is one of the bigger costs. I spent $2,625 on flights and I plan to do better this year. While that's not a lot of money in the scheme of things, it was still more than I would like to spend. And the reason that happened is because we made some bad choices. So for instance, we we went to Ecuador when it was off season. We went to the beaches of Ecuador when it was just always cloudy and cold. <laughs> and because of that, we ended up only staying in Ecuador for like two and a half weeks and then leaving. So something that if I could go back and tell myself what I know now, I would say do your research and know where you're going and if you really want to be there. Also, just travel slower. So for instance, this year when we go to Colombia, we're going to stay longer because we know that we love Colombia. So I think we'll probably stay at least three months and save a lot of costs on flights. There is also some cost that goes into travel when you don't, you know, go anywhere in the country, but you're still Ubering, which by the way is very, very cheap in Latin America, or like Tuk Tuk's, um, buses in Peru. So when I was in Peru, I spent two months there. I went from Lima to Ica to Nazca, back up again and did the whole thing again when my mom came. And the prices of buses in Peru are actually fairly cheap, but if you're traveling every week, that still adds up and you're exhausted. So I don't recommend that. Okay, so now on to housing. I spent $3,559 on housing. Now this was almost all in Airbnbs, by the way. I set a budget for myself of about $450 a month on housing. Now you can find places for $450 or less in all of the places I've been to for monthly prices on Airbnb. And they can still be really nice. Something though that really helped me was I spent a lot of time traveling with my mom and then sometimes my older brother as well. So we were able to split costs in a really, really awesome way. So I started off by staying in super small, you know, rooms trying to save a lot of money. And then when my mom and then my brother started traveling with me, um, we were able to get sort of nicer places, bigger places, and still maintain that low cost because we were splitting the price. Along with that, I I did spend about one week in free housing doing a work away, but that was just one week. And then in total about maybe two weeks, um, staying with a friend in Colombia where I didn't have to pay for that either. So in total in the year, I stayed for free for, for about three weeks. <laughs> so all you have to do to find these cheap prices is first of all, make sure you're not going to super expensive places, <laughs> but then go on Airbnb 
Um, set your price limit to what you're willing to pay and set your dates for a month because then you're going to get deals. When you stay in places for at least a month, they cut prices dramatically. Okay, so now on to how I am making money while traveling. I thankfully did not hit my limits um, in my savings account before I needed to get a job I didn't like. I was able to find jobs I really did like. So along with my YouTube channel that I run, that is a, I have a steady, very small income <laughs> from that Patreon that is helpful. I also work for a nonprofit organization um, through one of the other languages I speak. Also, my entire YouTube channel is usually not in English. It's in Esperanto, this other language I speak. And I am essentially like a personal assistance I come up with sort of marketing ideas and other random things here and there send out thank you letters this and that it's a really actually fun job um, because I really like the people I'm working for and with I love working within a community that I feel connected to the Esperanto community but also you know minority languages as a whole and so that is really enjoyable and I was able to find that through my connections through speaking this language and then my third source of income is Cambly. Cambly has saved me honestly so Cambly is a site where I teach English and you're hired as an independent contractor. You set all your own hours. You can take as much time off as you want. You literally don't even have to work at all if you want to take a month off, two months off. So I work about on average three hours a day and I have students from all over the world. It is so so cool and so rewarding to be able to, you know, make friends really with these students, help them with their English, but also like learn about their culture, their language. It's really, really interesting. And it's so rewarding to have students come back week after week to talk to me. Now, while this job might not be high paying if you're living in, you know, the US or Canada, places like that, it is plenty enough to supplement my income to make more than I spend in Latin America. And I can live comfortably and also put some money away in my savings. So with these three sorts of different incomes, I have finally uh, hit a point where I'm making more than I'm spending and am able to travel as long and as far and as much as I want. Now, I definitely don't think Cambly is for everyone. If you're not an extrovert, if you're not, if you don't really enjoy talking to people every day, <laughs> maybe this isn't the job for you. But if it is, you do not need a degree to do this. You don't need a TEFL, you just have to speak English as a native speaker. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go through my link in the text below this video and you'll help me out and you'll be able to start teaching English. So that's that on how I make money and how much I spend, but I'm going to give you a total now of everything I spend in 12 months traveling abroad in Latin America. I spent $9,418 in total. Now, coming from the US, that is unheard of. That's absurd. That is so much less than I could ever hope to spend in the US in a year. So if you're not traveling, you're from the US, you're not traveling because you think, you know, it's impossible, I could never afford that. That's not true. If you're able to earn in the US dollar, you are set. So if you want to travel, you certainly can. So now let's talk about safety traveling as a woman in Latin America. So other than an unfortunate incident where I did get my cell phone stolen in Peru, which by the way was just, that just happened because I was being stupid, standing on a street corner with my cell phone out in my hand, waiting for an Uber. Someone ran by, stole my phone, didn't hurt me, did hurt my pride and did force me to buy a burner phone, um, which now I use anytime I feel that I might not be in a totally safe area. Other than that, I have not had any issues any issues. Now, I don't go out partying. I don't go to bars. I don't go out late at night. I don't drink alcohol. So I am never in a situation where I might be compromised. But it's still, you just have to treat it like you would any city in the US. Be smart when you're in big cities in Latin America. Keep your belongings secured. Don't flaunt wealth in any way and you'll be fine. Now, in small towns like where I am right now, Lake Atitlan in Guatemala, there is just absolutely zero issue. I could go out in the middle of the night alone with my phone wandering around and I will just have no problem. Everybody is so kind here. Everybody is so willing to help you out. One thing I would advise is to have at least a bit of knowledge of the language. Me personally, I prefer to be in less touristy places. This is one of the more touristy places I've been to. And in doing that, you end up in places where less people are going to speak English. In Cali, my favorite city I've been to, almost nobody speaks English. 
English. That's really great if you're trying to learn Spanish, um, but it's really not awesome if you have absolutely no idea what's going on around you. So wherever you go, just make sure you have a basic working knowledge of important phrases in the language spoken there. Something you really need to be careful with is your cell phone. Now, local people told me this time and time again, I didn't listen to them. That's how I ended up getting my phone stolen in Peru. I sort of went in with the mindset of the invincible American, and that is just not a correct mindset to have. You will get your phone stolen if you flaunt it. It's a matter of time. So don't be that person. Don't be me. Listen to the locals, respect what they're saying to you, and follow their advice. And that is another thing. Do not go traveling thinking that you're going to be surrounded by your culture, because you're not. And that's not the point of all of this. Be ready to learn about a new culture, a new way of doing things, new food, new language, new ideas. If you are willing to embrace that, if you go into this with the idea that that's what you're looking for, you are going to have a great time. And then on top of that, if you speak a bit of the language, you can make friends with the locals. Try not to surround yourself with a bunch of people from your country who speak your language. Try not to go to the areas of the city where it's just a bunch of tourists. Put yourself in a position where you're going to be talking to people who have lived there their whole lives. You're going to have a much more enriching and fun time. Make sure that you're not going into this thinking like I'm going to have everything exactly how I'm used to it because you won't. Airbnbs are going to all be a little different. The kitchen supplies will be different. The living area you're in, you have to get used to adjusting to new environments. The food is going to be different and it's going to be delicious in most cases, but it's not gonna be what you're used to. Oh my goodness, and another thing. When people tell you not to use the water out of the tap to rinse your mouth out when you're brushing your teeth, Listen to them. Don't drink the tap water and don't even rinse your mouth out because you don't want to take the chance. My mom and my brother do it and they have no issues. But I, oh my gosh, my stomach. If you have a sensitive stomach, listen to the rules. Listen to the suggestions. Don't rinse your mouth with the tap water. Honestly, that is about all I can think of in terms of advice. I hope I haven't left anything out. If I have, if you have any questions about my time traveling in the past year, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. This past year has been the most exciting and enriching and just lovely time in my life. I have no plans to stop anytime soon. I'll be in Mexico next, then Colombia again, and then hopefully in the summer, in the spring of next year, I'll be going to Europe. So the party does not stop here. If you're interested in following along with my journey, subscribe to my YouTube channel. The videos are in Esperanto, but they do have English subtitles. And that's about it. Like I said, let me know in the comments what you think, and I hope you enjoyed my video. Bye.